When it comes to hunting in Kansas, it just screams big whitetail. I've been to Kansas whitetail hunting before, but it's been quite a few years. I had not been successful. I'd never even drawn back. I could just sit here, stare forever, and just take all the glory in. We're about to start the hike. We're going to the other end of this soybean field. Gentry's going with me and Michael and Steve are going down this direction here into the soybeans. And uh, we got some pretty big canvas bucks that are covering a lot of ground here. The weather, as you can tell, <laughs> you can tell it's a little bit shaky. We rolled in, it was about a I don't know, 50 mile an hour wind yesterday at South. Knew the big storms were coming. They hit this morning right after we got done sighting in our bows. And it has been a steady rain since then. Trying to drive into this farm, I got stuck trying to get up the hill there. Just, you know, had to make a turn, couldn't make it. We had to dump the trailer there. We've got the, the unit now here so we can get all the way back here as far as we could. We're gonna start hiking. If it quits raining, I think these deer are gonna get up and we'll see some action. Every hunting trip has its own adventures and creates its own memories, and I think that's one of the most exciting things for me. You know, we're in camp with Steve Nussel, who we've hunted with for years, and Scott Newby, and they're, we're all out bow hunting. We all drew in Kansas, and, you know, we kind of planned and talked about this trip all summer long. We got here, and now it's, now it's here. This is really different than most of the places I've hunted in Kansas. I've hunted in Kansas quite a few times. And most of the hunts I've done in Kansas have been over on the west side, and it's a whole lot more agriculture, very few trees. This end of Kansas here, I've always wanted to hunt it, but I've never had a chance. So now that I'm drawing hair, I'm really, I see why people really like this. this. These areas here, I mean, big trees, big hardwoods, got plenty of farm country as well, and some, some really big deer. We're in the blind, in the stand, in the tower. I don't know what we're calling it, but uh, it's actually, it's comfortable for sure. We've got an area right out front that's a little closer to comfort, so I'm gonna have to be better at my job than maybe I normally am on getting drawn. Not spoken a deer, but uh, it looks like a really good spot. I mean, there's a lot of them areas from which deer can come and where they can go. Wade is about you know, at least several hundred yards, half a mile to our right um, on the edge of a field. So evidently there's bucks that are drawing the area, uh, some good sized ones. A really, really good one is mostly nocturnal right now. So we're here ready and probably be a little while before we see anything. I mean, hopefully we see something, but it's gonna be a minute for sure, I think. And, just sit here and be quiet. As you can see, it's cold, it's wet, and I think Key is just going to be staying warm and dry as best as we can. It sounds like we have a couple of 4x4 four four bucks, two different ones that have the decent size in there, but with all this weather from what they're saying too, like anything could come in, so I'm fully prepared for anything to happen, um, and just hopefully get off a good shot, but uh, with the weather and everything coming, cold weather behind it, that uh, I think things should be moving, especially as warm as they've been.
8.30 this morning. And uh, winds changed. You know, we rolled into Kansas yesterday. It was 80 and hot and a 30 to 50 mile an hour southwest wind. And this little front came through. It's supposed to keep temperatures down um, all week, 60s and 30s, maybe low 40s, which is, you know, pretty decent hunting weather. I know they like it in the 20s, but I'm pretty soft. <laughs> so we're going to hope that we see a lot of movement and fight to hunt on days like this where there's a light rain and a little front coming through. I've always felt like it, right when that rain quit, a lot of deer will get up. They kind of shake off. They get that water off. They come to eat. We've got two soybean fields on top of this ridge. And uh, kind of a little pitch point here. Great bedding area out in front of us. And there's a corn pile out there too. And there's just a lot of deer. Uh, and talking to Hunter Burkert, he basically told me this is an area that they really have to work on the doe numbers because there's always a lot of them here. But they kill several big, big deer this farm every year, most loader season, bow season, and uh, hopefully it'll be our turn. End of the first evening hunt, and man, when that rain stopped, the uh, the temperature dropped. It really got cold, but then still ended up seeing some young bucks in like a field that was way off in the distance and glassing them a little bit, and they were sparring for a little while, but uh, nothing was sized at all, and eventually had another young doe and a young fawn that came in on us. Any small movement, they were looking, they were watching, and by then we were out of light, and so headed back. Gonna give her another shot in the afternoon here, but. Overall, a very fun, successful first day in Kansas, if you ask me. Just a very beautiful spot, and I can't wait to come back tomorrow. This scenario and this setup is really going to be a fun one all the way around. The way that our lodging is set up at the hotel, a small town here in Baldwin City, it's a really neat backdrop. This is an old historical town from like 1850s. The college uh, was created that's here. There's, you know, just a few restaurants, a few gas stations. You get the sense, small town Kansas, everybody knows 
everybody, but we're not too far from Lawrence and Topeka and Kansas City uh, and all of this agriculture that makes up this northeast part of Kansas just really sets up great for some incredible encounters. Where we're staying, like I said, it's an old hotel that's family owned, great lodging, good accommodations. We're able to hang out with the other hunters that are in camp. Many of them are some of our good friends. Uh, there's actually a putt-putt golf course behind it, a little nine-hole golf course. We've had some pretty epic battles. That to me is one of the best parts of a hunting camp. Spending that time together, talking strategies, sharing stories, catching up on friends and family, cooking out after it's all over, and then sharing in success if somebody gets one. Day two this morning, as you can tell, it's windy, but it's always windy in Kansas, right? We got a northwest wind, I believe it is, 15 to 25, gusting to 30. Uh, that doesn't really surprise me, and I don't think it affects the deer here like it does other places. Uh, it's colder. The deer, you would think, would get up on their feet. Getting pretty excited to get back out in the stand. It's always, to me, the second day, I feel like I begin to get comfortable where I'm hunting, and I, I know how I'm getting in and out. I think I'm going to the same spot I was last night, which we have a plan around that, but still great to be out and uh, I need to go get my comfort level a little bit higher with how my bow's working, so. Oh. There we go. Smoked him. He's dead. Definitely a little more sunny, a little drier, which is great. Temperature dropped a lot, so needless to say, I'm going to be very bundled up. As many deer as we saw yesterday, as cold as it's getting now, I just expect more to be walking through and coming through and hopefully uh, this time we actually get a buck that comes out and those ones we saw in the field across, you know, maybe one of those big boys will come and give us a shot, so can't wait to get back out there and see what it's like. Saw a good little mix of, uh, of deer throughout the night here. Um, unfortunately, nothing with size at all. Had one, one little, kind of like a young buck that had really weird nubbit on the left-hand side. And then, man, right before, it was kind of like end of shooting legal light, a decent little eight point came out of me. It was obviously a young buck and all that stuff, but uh, everything actually happened different than yesterday, which is kind of funny and alarming all at the same time. But you, know, you just you can't pattern the animals and you never know what they're going to do so considering you've seen bucks on the quorum pile and bucks that are getting a little bigger than what we've seen i'm uh i'm still feeling good about the rest of the week we were blessed with the presence of what i'll now affectionately refer to as the stomp sisters had some does come in and they just weren't comfortable same does as last night we think and all they do is stick their nose in the air and stomp a little bit and eventually blow up then go around and come back. I am going to probably lobby to not come back to this spot tomorrow. We did get to we did get to enjoy a possum. So day two uh, I still really like the conditions. Thought it's setting up really nice for what we we're gonna do. We decided to go back to the same spot we'd hunted on day one. Uh, didn't see quite as many deer but we actually saw quite a few little bucks kind of milling around down on the bottom sparring and everything but Everything showed up late and, you know, past, past legal shooting time, we were seeing stuff. The scouting cameras are starting to light up in the middle of the night. And that's kind of becoming the theme for this story. It's can somebody get a, a big mature deer out in front of them uh, with legal shooting time. We are in an entirely different spot, a uh, different farm. We've been hunting with Wade and Gentry and now Michael and I are probably about an hour away from them. We're, we're both trying new spots tonight. Promising intel coming out of the place we're gonna go into. There were some deer where we were at, they're just, they're coming in an hour or two after we got out. So we need to find some daytime deer. And evidently the spot we're going to has a few of them. Sun's out, it's bright. We're gonna get warm getting in and then hopefully get some walk out in front of us. Both Steve and I have uh, moved stands. Scott went back to the same place because that deer that they've seen it's a big one, so hopefully they'll get a chance um, for us. And when we got here, the big 
storm for Monday. Our blind had been toppled. When Ginger and I were able to get get in here, get it lifted, <laughs> get it back up. Right now the winds are perfect. I mean, they're blowing in the three windows that we have open, just perfectly hitting me right in my face. And this is a spot where you know you can kind of see several fence lines and you know kind of tree lines all coming together in one little point here. And I would think these deer on this spot late in the evening they're going to work their way out. There's some ponds over this direction, plenty of places for them to feed. And, you know, my hoping they're going to walk right down this area that they've kind of mowed and give us a shot. So, feeling really confident. Just this, sometimes things are supposed to work your way. So, I'm feeling it might be our night. Find him. Recording. We're just gonna have to give it a minute. <laughs> Feel like the shot was high. We'll watch it back for sure. I mean, we ain't doing anything for a while, but we're probably trying to watch it back here in the blind. And then um, my guess is we'll put out some calls, wait till it's dark, back out. I can't believe I just got drawn without spooking the deer and then shot high. That time. Then I may be, I may be being hard on myself right now. Like it may, but it didn't feel like the best shot in the world. That's for darn sure. It just didn't. Um, I don't think he went very far. I think he's probably about a hundred yards out, bedded down. Well, I think Michael, I mean, he, you think he's dead? I mean, I was, I was looking to the viewfinder, but I'm pretty sure that that was a decent shot. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I... There's, there's a slight chance I heard him crash out there. I did hear a crash. 
Okay, so maybe I'm being really hard. I'm really critical of myself. I'm Super excited. Right now. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm really critical. I mean, I the last thing I I want to do, and I've done it. I put an arrow through. I put an arrow through a pin cushion. I was one of the pin cushioners before the executioner and Mr. Wade Middleton came in and took that deer. I just it didn't feel like the perfect shot, and maybe that's why I'm bummed. I don't know. I also don't want to get my hopes up based on what Michael just said because I know I could have made a better shot. But that said, maybe we have a dead deer. We are not going to do anything stupid. We're going to probably, when I stop rambling, <laughs> we'll watch it back. And we'll let everybody know we threw, threw an arrow at a, what looked to be a good mature buck. Hey, he wasn't the biggest horned Kansas deer I've ever seen in my life, but that is the biggest horned Kansas deer that's let me get drawn back on him. <laughs> so... I'm happy with that if, if we can harvest him. We started seeing some does and a few animals, you know, kind of moving around. We started hearing coyotes howling in the distance and coyote comes out in front of me and I cannot stand a fawn killer. What a duck. I mean, that coyote dropped out. I mean, he just kind of like bent right in the middle when my arrow zipped over his head. That was pretty crazy, pretty amazing. And uh, <laughs> I, all I can do is laugh. The light's getting low. We've got deer out in the field. We've got bucks over here starting to spar off of the distance as my phone starts vibrating in my pocket. You can actually see it in a stealth cam shot where the deer's jumping and you can kind of see the knock up high. You can see just a little green piece up there flashing. Can't tell much else. You know, they're reviewing the footage. They're waiting for us to drive about an hour to get there and we're on our way. All right, so end of night three and man, just about saw everything at one point. We're getting flanked by possum. We had eight different does and a mix of does and falls come in. And uh, man, it got exciting because I was just waiting for something big to come in. Just felt like it was going to be that day. Wind was dead calm, not blowing at all. Of course, when it was blowing, it wasn't in our favor. And even right at the end, we got a raccoon and a coyote. And, but uh, nothing happened. The positive thing is, Nestle's got a, an arrow in one, so we're going to head back to camp, see the story, hear the story, and um, yeah, hopefully either uh, do some tracking tonight or see what the word is. When I first saw the footage sitting out there in the in the cornfield and looked at it, I, I mean, you know, we're looking at it on a small camera screen. I thought the shot was uh, about three inches to the right and about three inches lower than where it turned out to be. And we didn't know that until we got back into the into the camp and really started looking at the footage. And Steve's really beating himself up. Steve is a guy just like most good true hunters. They want to do right by the deer. They want the deer, you know, to expire as fast as it possibly can based on the means that they're hunting with. And, you know, this shot was high. And, you know, I thought it had a chance to have gotten in the lungs, but as we looked more and more, there was no way. This, this was a deer shot strictly in the back strap. This is a deer, in my opinion, 98, 99% chance to live um, and, and be out chasing does. And again, somebody else will probably harvest him, hope we get an ending to that story. But, uh, you know, it's a, it was a tough ending, but the positive side of it, I mean, it was a pretty, pretty well believed that this deer was gonna be okay. I talk a lot about making myself wait and be patient, and I was up until that point where I decided that I don't take the shot, and then I rushed it, I guess. Whatever I did, I screwed it up. And uh, there's a lot of talk right now about how that deer's living, that I got, the, I got the loin, I got below the spine and above the vitals, and all I'm doing is tenderizing the stuff that we like to consume from these guys. And I, I, I honestly can only hope that that's the case. I got one more sit, I'm gonna go sit in the same spot and hope against hope he comes in and that I can do him right. And that he is still living and that he will live even if I don't see him tonight. I'm 
paying a price. This is my penance. I figured that uh, the chances of, of a deer coming by tonight were slim. I figured the chances of the deer I shot at and hit high last night coming by were far less than slim. But I did not figure that I was going to get a lesson in agriculture tonight. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, they're harvesting the beans or cleaning up the field or what they're doing, but they're making a lot of noise and they're creating a lot of dust. And this is what I get. I did this. Right there, right there. All right, Scott Doobie, what's our game plan now? All right, so we talked to the outfitter, um, kind of looking through options, and it's like, okay, do we go back to this stand since we haven't seen the big guy at all? And um, or do we move somewhere else? Just made the executive decision to head back to the same spot that we've been in. The other spot is gonna put us in. Um, they really haven't been seeing anything in there anyways. So it's like, man, if we've been seeing a lot throughout here, I'm feeling confident, I'm not one to quit. I can be a little stubborn sometimes, just ask my wife. But uh, we're gonna give it another go, see what it's like. And uh, if there's nothing in here, we're gonna try it again for the morning and pretty much just ride this one out for the entire hunt out here in Kansas. But uh, at least it's a pretty spot. At least we know we're gonna see something through here. But man, I just gotta, gotta believe he's gonna come through or something's gonna come through, especially now they're starting to cut more around us. I mean, hopefully that just means that their, their uh, food source is shrinking down. So give it another shot. This evening, we had a new nine point that came out and that gives me hope. Not that I've given up hope yet. We, man, I, I still can't complain about what we're doing. You know, it's a beautiful spot to be in, still seeing so much all around us. And anytime you hear that crunching, you know something's coming, you're just waiting for that big guy to come in. So haven't lost all hope yet. Yeah, that's, that's it for me in Kansas. Um, yeah, we got 10 minutes of shooting light left, but uh, I'm not even going to say it's my luck. I mean, I made my own luck last night, but we've had, uh, we've had multiple combines work in the field just off to our left. It basically rendered our presence here just null and void. I mean, um, I didn't expect much, and uh, I definitely didn't expect that. But I feel like I had, to, I had to put in the time. I for sure had to put in the time here, um, just in case. But half hour in, combines started up and uh, they're still going and we're about out of light so we're done i'm done uh yeah i i like kansas i don't know if kansas likes me but i'm looking forward to coming back but that's it uh, hopefully somebody else had some luck tonight um, i gotta get out a day earlier than most so they've got a couple more opportunities at getting deer on the ground I didn't get it done, but there's always next year, and I'm really hoping that uh, we get some cam, uh, some field cam pics of that deer I hit last night, and that we see he's living and uh, doing what deer do in the rut here in a week or two. So it's all, folks. Gentry and I took our fourth night and went back to what they call the propane stand area and, and climbed up in there and got settled in and. Uh, we had some good encounters, several does coming in, a little, little spike out there chasing them around, and then right at dark, a, a buck, I saw this giant body, got my heart pounding. Coming through the brush, turned out he was not a shooter either, and as the night fell on uh, on the fourth night, you know, the, once again, the scouting cameras are lighting up after dark of, of deer all over the place, and as we fast forward, we're looking to our fifth, uh, fifth night, and 
We're gonna head out to where we hunted the first two days in between these big soybean fields, get up on this hill. We know those deer are bedding down in front of it. We haven't been in here in a couple of days and we'll just see what shows up. That's all we can do. We're in Kansas, we've got a chance. It's a positive sign. That's the first one of these we've seen this week, which is a new scrape. That's fresh right there. There's a couple of leaves that have fallen in it, but not many. You can tell where he's been tearing it up. Probably a historical one because there's no leaves really on the end of that where they've been licking on it and leaving scent. So, I mean, that's positive. It's, it, you know, when you book a trip and you go on a trip, you're days away from success or failure. And there's another road right there, a scrape right there next to it. So they're scraping all right in here. I mean, they're pawing that ground pretty, pretty good. That's positive. It's coming in the final Kansas hunt for this year at least and um, this is kind of more of what I expected to see from a stereotypical Kansas type of hunting setup. Just open expansive cornfield. We're going to take the XTR out and kind of park in a little bit of a draw. Walk a good ways to basically the opposite side of the field and sounds like there's a lot of stuff moving through here. It's a little warm so I don't think Bill will come out but heck we're going to give it a shot. Well, that wraps up our Kansas adventure for October. There's still other opportunities and times in this season, so if uh, everything works out, we'll, we'll try to get back up here. Hot weather, maybe, I don't know, acorns, you just don't know. I mean, you can come up with all kinds of theories, but most of the deer were moving at night. Uh, we had some bucks in this evening. Uh, five minutes left of shooting light. We had one on our left, a couple more out in front coming up, and other ones came up right up to the to the corn pile there. But I mean, it was well past legal shooting time for there. But it was just fun to see them, fun to have an encounter. You know, we had a great time here. Lots of good friends, lots of good memories. Great putt putt challenge, good food, good good camaraderie, good encounters. Um, we'll be back. We love Kansas. It's always been been a fun place for us to come hunt. Had uh, you know, interesting, fun sit here today. Had a couple of young bucks that came in. One I saw a few deer that were way far on the other side of the field, and had a, a bigger buck than we've seen that came out for a little while there too. And man, every time they start looking in the woods, you think, "Here comes a big one. Here comes a big one. Or at least here comes something else." And peeking around corners, never saw anything. So the sun set on us and um you know that closes another chapter here in the Yamaha whitetail diaries um kansas was awesome you know going home empty handy from a deer standpoint but um going just full of great memories met a lot of great new people shared a lot of wonderful stories too baldwin city such a cool area great place to go to we hunt all the surrounding areas here too and um man just has a new warm special place in my heart right now and, and loving Kansas. Can't wait to come back here. And of course, that being said, if you guys can't make it out to Kansas, don't forget you have great hunting areas and opportunities in your backyard, whether it's farmers, get to know them, or, or you have public land all the time there too. So enjoy everything that you can while you can and realize your adventure.